Good morning, folks. It's Advanced Higher uh, Chemistry, uh, Part 1, Electromagnetic Spectrum, Waves and Energy. Um, I would like to talk to you about electromagnetic spectrum first, so what I'll do is I'll just draw it here. Um, what is electromagnetic radiation? Well, the good news is in chemistry we don't need to worry about that too much. Physics um, are much more technical than us. We have a simple version of it. As far as we are concerned, it's just the type of energy that comes from the sun. There's a whole load of different flavours of this energy. Some of it, well, a tiny portion of it, we can actually see, and we call it light. Um, and the light consists of a whole bunch of colours that you see in the rainbow. Um, we see white light, of course, which is a total lie. There's no such thing as white light. It's just the rainbow colours all mushed together. Um, and there's a few other flavours of this light that we can't see, but they are there. Uh, we can have down below, when I say below, uh, physics people know what I mean, but I'll come back to that for the rest of us in a second. Below red, there's infrared, and above blue and violet, there's ultraviolet. Um, we can go up here into x-rays and gamma rays. Handy if your name is Bruce Banner. I nearly wrote Gamma Banner there. Gamma rays. Um, we can drift down here into microwaves. So beloved of crackpot conspiracy theorists. And down here to radio waves. Um, and visible light uh, here. Now, um, physics go into great detail about whether this energy is a wave or whether it's a particle. And it can do a weird thing, we'll come back to that later on, it can actually be both, but we'll, we'll come back to it, let's draw it as a wave. Okay, now, you need to know some um, terms to do with waves. You need to know um, term number one, the wavelength, which the clues in the name is actually a physical distance between the high or low spots of a wave. So this is a wavelength, that's its name. It's got the symbol lambda, and it's got a unit, of course. Technically speaking, it's in meters. We'll come back, we'll put a little asterisk there, and come back to them um, very shortly. There's also a different term, which is frequency. Um, that is the number of waves that will pass you by in a second if you were standing still. Um, so that's a number of waves. Um, per second. Um, it's got a symbol, HZ. Let's keep the same notation as that. So it's symbol is HZ and its unit is in... This is what happens when you try and do this the second time around. I do sincerely apologise. The physicists use a weird... Um, they use a weird uh, symbol called uh, that, if I remember correctly, mu. But in in chemistry, we're going to keep life simple because it's complex enough, as this video has demonstrated to me. Um, so we're going to call it F for frequency. And its unit is hertz. <coughs> um, and the last term we need is the speed that these waves are travelling at. Um, so that's just speed. Um, and because we're dealing with this particular type of radiation that comes from the sun in the form of light, we're just going to call it the speed of light. Physics will go into the fact, correctly, that it changes depending on what you're passing it through, but we're not worried about that, so we'll just call it speed of light. It's a constant value, C is its symbol, and it has a constant number, just for a change. So these two numbers vary, this number does not, it's not for us anyway. 3 times 10 to the 8, pretty, pretty nippy, meters per second. So that's the speed of light. Um, you need to know how these two terms are interlinked. Um, before that, I said I would. There's an asterisk here. I said I would come back to wavelength. Um, frequency is always in hertz. Speed is always in meters per second. Wavelength, because these waves are so close to each other, we rarely have it in meters. Um, we instead shorten it to a slightly friendlier to right number. I don't know if you know the prefixes um, from physics. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, is a millimetre, that's a thousandth of a metre. 1 times 10 to the minus 6 is a micrometre, that's a millionth of a metre. And one, the next power of 3 down, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, is a nanometer. And that is what we tend to quote wavelengths as. In fact, I'd like you to be familiar with the fact that the wavelength of blue light, 
sorry, the wavelength of a blue light is around 400 nanometers, roughly. And the wavelength of red light is around 700 nanometers. Which, by the way, is a tiny wee fragment of this whole spectrum. We're rubbish at seeing. We're totally rubbish at seeing. How cool would it see, be if you could see radio waves? Everybody's phone would light up like a little torch in the pocket. Anyway, moving on from that delirious ranting. Um, is there anything else I want to cover on this sheet? Yes, there is. Um, I want to cover the link between frequency and wavelength. Um, and I said above and below here, didn't I? If non-physicists, above what and below what and higher and lower what? Well, this is uh, an order of frequency. So these gamma wave rays are the highest frequency, so there's most passing you in one second. Down here, radio waves, much slower frequency. And what's the link between frequency and wavelength? Before I answer that, let's have, so this is the high frequency end. Low frequency end. Which also means, interestingly, that blue light must be a higher frequency than red light, and yet look at the numbers. So that's a giveaway, of course, to the link between these two. These two, frequency and wavelength, are oppositely linked to each other. As the wavelength gets larger in number, the frequency drops in number, and vice versa. Um, which makes perfect sense, by the way, because if you imagine shrinking this down, so if you shrink that down, <clears throat> so your waves don't look like this, they look like this. Then loads of waves are going to pass you in one second. So as the wavelength decreases, the frequency increases. Well, hopefully that's clear enough, folks. Um, and as I said, that is the little part that we can see out of all of this. You can feel infrared as heat, and you can feel ultraviolet's effects uh, as sunburn. Um, Interestingly, apparently, human retinas can see ultraviolet, but the lens blocks it out. Cataract patients, uh, in between having their uh, lens removed and a new lens put in, sometimes they are discharged from the hospital for a brief period with no lens in their eye, and colours all look very different. How cool is that? Um, let's move on to the next sheet. Um, I did talk about the fact that this electromagnetic spectrum can behave as either a wave or particles. <sighs> Imminent headaches await us. No, they don't actually, because physics worry about this hugely. Uh, it's called the wave-particle duality. Um, uh, we don't worry too much about that in chemistry. But it is definitely a thing. Um, I won't even bother going into the... If you're interested, you can look up diffraction of light. I'll maybe put a link to a video if I can find one. So you can make light diffract. That's the pretty patterns uh, you get when you scatter waves and they interfere with each other. And you can only get that happening with waves. And yet, there's a separate experiment called the photoelectric effect, which proves that light must behave as individual little particles. So depending on which experiment you do, um, you can get light to behave as either one of these. How weird is that? It's the start of weirdness in the quantum realm. Um, I mentioned the photoelectric effect because um, we then this, this makes light behave as particles, and these particles have got a name. They are called photons. So a photon is an individual particle of light, um, if it's behaving like that. Uh, if you want to behave it like that. So, um, let's leave that for a wee second. We'll come back to two math equations that you guys are going to have to know about once again. The physicists can probably shut their eyes and doze for this part. And um, non-physicists might find this useful. Equation number one is the link between speed, wavelength and frequency. And speed is a constant for us anyway. Um, uh, frequency and wavelength are related in this way here. Which, by the way, mathematically, just confirms what I said earlier on. Because if this is a constant number, as this increases, to give a constant answer, this must decrease. Brilliant. Um, the second equation, which we're going to steal from physics as well, um, is concerned with energy. Because 
I did say that this topic was electromagnetic spectrum waves and energy, and it turns out that these photons here carry energy. Um, and the energy carried by a photon is proportional to the frequency of that light. So that means that blue light, which is a higher frequency than red light, so blue light carries more energy than red light does. Uh, and ultraviolet carries even more energy, and so on as you go up here. This explains a few things, of course. It explains why these can punch right through most of you. It explains why this stuff contains enough energy to break the bonds in your DNA and cause skin cancer. Um, that's what the photoelectric effect shows. I've got a really nice video that I'll try and find a link to that, sh that demonstrates this to be absolutely true. So energy is proportional to frequency, and in maths that's just another way of saying the energy is equal to a constant number times the frequency. The constant number here is called Planck's constant. This number is in your data book. Um, it's fairly small, to say the least. It's actually 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So that's a constant, that's a constant, these are variable, these are variable. Happy with that? Don't know why I'm asking you that, can't reply. So I'm going to assume that you're happy with it. If you're not, send me a private comment, by all means. Um, now, we're starting to wander away from physics and get into chemistry here, because this is the energy contained in a single photon. Now, that is not a lot of use to us, because we don't measure things in singles in chemistry, we measure in moles, of course. So, um, we need the energy in a mole for photons. Um, you need to be able to calculate that for any given colour of light or frequency of light. Now, this was a concept that was taken out of higher. It's quite possible your higher teacher mentioned it to you. If they did, gold star for them. Um, but there is a number uh, called Avogadro's number. It's given the symbol, slightly oddly, of L. It's called Avogadro's number. And it's the number of things per mole. So it's the number of atoms per mole. It's quite big, as you might expect because uh, atoms and so on are quite small. And it turns out it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That is another constant that's in your data book. So that's Avogadro's number. And it's the number of things per mole. So if we modify the physics equation, we now have energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency times Avogadro's number. That number there will now be in joules per mole. Great. Um, let's have a look at an example calculation, um, I think, for this, folks. So, a typical question would say, calculate the energy contained in red light. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Actually, maybe not say red light, in light of frequency of wavelength, let's go with the wavelength, 720 nanometers in kilojoules per mole. Okay, um, you are free of course, to, at this point you're free to go and do this yourself. Um, so if you want to, you can pause the video, go and try this calculation, come back, see what you get. There are two ways to do this. You can use E equals HFL, um, but that would appear to be a bit of a problem because this is a wavelength there, not a frequency, um, which means you can do a little bit of substitution um, because if C equals F lambda, then F equals C over lambda, and we can substitute that into there, and you could get E equals h c l over lambda. You certainly could, absolutely. Um, the other way of doing it, which is the way I'm going to do it, is a slightly longer way around because this will give you an indication of just what frequency corresponds to this wavelength. I'm hoping 
Um, if we flip back to this for a second, I'm hoping that this 400 to 700 nanometer range is now embedded in your head. That's blue up to red for 400 to 700 nanometers. Um, but if a question ever asked you to calculate the frequency of light instead, you don't have a ballpark figure to know whether you're doing it right or not. So I'm going to do it here. Um, I'm going to use um, F equals C over lambda first. That will give me the frequency frequency of this red light and then I'm going to plug that directly into E equals H F L. We'll get an answer that way. Once again if you want to you can pause the video there um, and see what you get. Let's use my son's uh, borrowed stroke stole his calculator. Um, so if you punch in here that's going to be um, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 720 times 10 to the minus 9. Remember, that's nanometers. Now, don't show it to me. I know mathematicians will say that that's not the right way to represent it. It should be 7.20 times 10 to the minus 7. I'm just juggling about the indices there in my head. But it doesn't matter. You can punch that into the calculator. Still give you the right answer. Um, so 3 times 10 to the 8 over 720 to the negative 9 gives us uh, 4 point... Um, 16667 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So that's the frequency power of 10 ish we're talking about for light. If you're really keen, and why not? You should be really keen, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You could go and compare the answer. That's for red light, of course, which isn't why I'm outlining it in red. You can go and try the blue light one, see what it comes out to be. Shouldn't be far away from that. Certainly the same power of 10. Um, so that's the frequency, and then we can plug this into here. So, by the way, you notice I didn't, I'm not going to round that. I'm going to keep that on the calculator, folks. Rounding is a common source of error in these calculations, especially if you've done 4.17. Nope, that's going to cost you marks. Advanced higher. Um, so we need Planck's constant, 6.63, that's h, uh, times 10 to the minus 34, times the frequency, which is already on my calculator, times Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Um, so I'm going to keep that number in the calculator, multiply it by 6.63 to the negative 34, and multiply it by 6.02 to the... Oh, to the wrong button. 6.02 to the 23, which gives us... one six six three zero. Oh. 2, 3, oh, 3. Let's round it up. Joules per mole. Ta-da! Only a bit of a mistake, haven't I? Because the SQA being the sick and twisted people that they are, aspirate and kill joules per mole. Not joules per mole. That's okay. Just divide by a thousand. 166.303 kilojoules per mole. How many significant figures should I use in the answer? Generally speaking, it's the same as the significant figures given in the question. So I'm going to call it as 166. And we're done. Um, so this doesn't seem very chemistry, does it? This seems all very physics-y. Um, but don't worry, we're just going to come back to what the significance of this is for atoms in the next video. Because our brothers and sisters tell us, quite correctly, in, uh, in physics, they tell us that you can't destroy or create energy. And yet we've spent all this time going into, that's a fair number of joules. That's 166,000 joules in a mole of photons. Um, that's energy that's streaming through the window and hitting everything in this room right now. And if that energy can't just disappear, and it can't, where is it going to? What is it doing to the atoms of the substance, the cellulose that were, that's being hit by this light? By all these different colours of light all at once. We'll have a look at that in the next video. Thanks for listening.